You're welcome back. Now on the breakfast, you'll be addressing a controversy regarding the resumption of schools. The federal government has insisted that today, January 18th, would be the day when students are expected to resume school after months of, you know, being away and being home, considering the ASU strike, the COVID-19 lockdown, and all of that. So House of Reps are proposing three months postponements, they're saying, you know, COVID-19 figures were lower before, schools were shut down. The figures are now over 108,000 cases in Nigeria and schools are about to reopen. And they're saying it's better for students to still stay home till, till at least April. Uh, we're now being joined by school proprietor, Mr. Kaede Salako, to discuss this with, with us. Thank you very much and good morning. Yeah, good morning, North Africa. All right, let's, uh, let's kick this off with a sense of just how much time we've lost, you know, considering just how much students, uh, how much time the students have spent away from, you know, academic activities. How much time have they lost with regards to, you know, academics, schoolwork, exams, and all of that? Uh, let's have a sense of that, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I must be very sincere that uh, the school industry in Nigeria is as confused and frustrated as the rest of the world is right now. Our academic curriculum has been badly distorted. We have not been able to achieve the flow as it has always been with us. Um, last term, we had to march some subject and uh, remove some for us to be able to complete what we have to do for that step. So the students are the receiving end. And also the school too, in terms of revenue generation, flow of activities, stability in the system, is also losing. But I have always said it, that the the core mission of the COVID-19 to the world is to stop the world from breathing. To stop the world from breathing. To stop the world from eating. And to stop the world from going work. So those are the three sole missions of the COVID-19 pandemic ravaging the world right now. All right. Yes. Coordinating doesn't want the world to breathe again. That right. is very difficult to know. All right, hold on, Mr. Um, Salako. Let me. We want to continue to look at what COVID 19 to stop us from doing everything. Our children are at home. They can't, go, they can't go to school. They can't go out to play. They can't go out to learn. They are, they are, they are bored. So, what is a, is a precarious situation of two things right now? If we say because of COVID 19, the system of Nigeria should not operate again, do we know the time that COVID 19 is going to go? Okay. Who can say the time that this coronavirus issue is going to be for? Nobody can say. Now we have been told, Mr. Mr. Salako, hold that on. The second way. Yeah, hold on, please. I, I, I want to just quickly. You're, you're going to go on, but um, I, I want you to go on with talking about if you agree, because I, I know you understand the severity of uh, what we're uh, dealing with here. It's a pandemic, and of course, the lives of uh, even the students are at risk here. The lives of teachers, the lives of um, of lecturers, principals, everybody, and parents at home um, are at risk here. So do you agree with the House of Reps saying that we still need a little bit, you know, of um, uh, time uh, to understand, you know, how we're going to deal with this or to, you know, hope that things would get better first before uh, putting these kids back in school? Yes, the House of Reps, the House of Reps, the House of Reps are in, in order because the primary function of government is to ensure the safety of the life and property of the citizens first. So they are just considering, they are just doing their work. They are just doing their work to show consideration 
about the area of safety of the Nigerian footprint. I want to let you know that if it is true that coronavirus is as, it is as dangerous as we hear it and we see it, then telling the children to go back to school is still very, very dangerous. But the fact of the matter is it. Can we continue to lock down the education industry in Nigeria permanently? When we wait the coronavirus go? That's one and two. The, the education, the private school industry, especially in Nigeria, has been containing hundreds of thousands of workers, private school teachers, support uh, teaching staff people in, in, in thousands, this is for the millions. For the past few months, that the school system in Nigeria has been expressing this lockdown issue. It has been a harrowing experience for this teacher. How are they going to teach? How are they going to work? Where are they going to get money to be treated? Where the school system is not making provisions okay, for so, talent for them. So, Mr. Mr. Salako, what do, you, what do you suggest? Yeah. What do you suggest? Because there's different angles to this problem. Now you've brought yeah. in the, the teachers and how they will survive. And, and there's, I understand all these concerns. And I'm sure that the Nigerian government, I believe, also understands these concerns. But, but what are your suggestions? You're a school proprietor. Um, yeah, how do you think that we can move forward? If I must suggest, Yes, moving forward is in doing it, going in, going about it experimentally. Going about it experimentally. During the phase of the first lockdown, during the period of the first lockdown, I was on a TV program where I said, let the government experiment the lock, I mean the, the opening of the school in places. In some of these students have gone back to school, and the government looked at it and sees that coronavirus is not being transmitted actively from the school to families. Because every child needs home, needs his family to go to school. So if a child goes to school and contracts coronavirus, it's likely to go home and infect the whole family. But we cannot continue to keep the children at home. Permanently. So we have to go experimental. All right, Mr. Salako. Let the, let the children go to school now. Let's see how it works. Whether the children are not going to go to school and contract the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. If it happens that they go and the state of school, you know, encouraging the spread of the virus, then I will advise the, the, the government to do the next by closing down the school. Oh. I won't be a selfish school owner. Like the small circles that the money I want to make. Let's go experimental. Let the schools open the money. Let's see how it goes within the next one or two weeks. If we the operation of the school, we not add to the number of the people that are catching infection to a reliable data anyway. If it is sure that it is not the school that is heading the transfer of the coronavirus. Then let this system continue to us. M Mr. Salako, you are you're just just a minute, Mr. Salako, you're a school proprietor. Is your school yes, I am. is your school going to open this morning? My school is open this morning because my school is hungry. All right, so do you think majority of public schools in Nigeria at the moment have the required hygiene facilities to reopen? They don't. They don't give private students. Let me tell you this part. Let me tell you this part. The last time the government asked us to open, just for one week, many schools were able to keep the, uh, the, the measures put in place, the precautionary measures. After a week, a lot of water stopped running in, in many schools. 
and sanitizers are both finished. The thermometer, the thermometer to take the temperature, stopped working. A lot of food abandoned all these precautionary measures. School owners, the school system was not oblivious of it again. It's not conscious of it anymore. So everybody dropped it. And it's the duty of the government to provide these, you know, materials to the schools, isn't it? It is very expensive to do. For how long can you continue to supply us and send us to about 4,000 students in the school every day? So, so let me... So, let me speak. So, so now I you... I say it is. Yeah, Mr. Salako, now you've, you've said... Yeah. A lot of schools don't even have running water. Yeah, you, now you've stated how how difficult. Yeah, sorry, sorry to you know step in here. You've stated how difficult and expensive it is uh, to ensure that you know the required um, you know health of um, you know logistics are put in place in these schools, yeah. both in private and the public schools. We so I, I wanna I wanna ask. The culture. Yes, no, we don't. You know, but I want to ask. Um, which would you say should be, you know, a better demand from school proprietors across the country, both public and private? Would you say yes. that the government should ensure that these things are put in place, to, you know, to, you know, at least so we have some level of uh, safety uh, measures put in place in schools? Or would you say, like you've suggested, that we should experiment? Uh, you know, experimenting really means um, risking... Um, young children and, and school proprietors and lecturers being infected with the virus, and some of them may some of them may may be fatal. Some of these infections may be fatal. So, do you want to put the lives of these people at risk? You know, in this experimental period. From my own, from my own, from from my own personal research and informed opinion. The spread of coronavirus in Nigeria, as far as Nigeria is concerned, has not been actively done, transmitted to the children, to the parents. The system has been in operation in the past four months. It has not been verified, verifiably proved that the children have been going to transmit their families. Because of their high immune system value or status, children um, are still under the age of human beings with high immune system. So they are still their immune system status is at intact. And so I don't think the coronavirus here really has anything much to the children. But I don't. From a to B and above, more. So let us experiment. Mr. Let the children go back to school. How about this alternative let, that were not? And let the government continue to watch. How many schools are going to be contacting the analysis and taking them home? Hmm. The government has any plan for the private education in Nigeria. In the area of pandemics, these people cannot continue to stay at home. They are hungry, they are angry, they are frustrated. Right. As I'm talking to you right now, I have lost a lot of millions in the past eight, nine months. If I can, can my teacher continue to live without food? Will my students continue to be happy to be staying at home? Not doing anything, but I'm um, isolated. So, what to think about this is in two ways safety of human life, the survival of human life. Both of them are very, very important. So, we have to continue to put on our thinking caps. We have to think for us to be able to strike a balance between the two delicate issues. Indeed. Life is the better. Mr. Salako. Survivor, life cannot survive without survivor.
Mr. Salako, we Life have noted your points Life about Life. survival. We've noted your points about, uh, you know, the, the, the need to survive and all of that. But how about this alternative? We've been talking for a long time now, since the outbreak of the pandemic and even before, about the need to consider alternative means of teaching, like online, that so many other developed countries have considered. Many countries across the world are graduating students. Many students are taking exams, even as we speak online. They're doing that from the comfort of their homes. Why is it so difficult? I mean, for us to adopt online teaching methods in Nigeria. If you could do that in just a minute, please. Education, education is, education can never, ever be complete, be what it is supposed to be. If the children can't be going out to interact with the environment, with the learning environment. A parent, about two of my parents in my school, disconnected their children from the online uh, program we initiated because according to them it is very it, it was very boring to the students they are not motivated to go and pick their phones to be learning from or from the computer it is very boring it is not interactive learning is not complete when the children cannot wake up in the morning dress for school, and go out there to interact with the learning environment and the chats. This online thing, yes, it's another, it's another alternative means. All right. But it is not part of our learning culture in Nigeria yet. Kaede Salako. How many parents people have devices to connect their children to this? Mr. Salako, thank you so How much. How many parents have devices? Uh, to connect their children to it. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Salako. Uh, you have, you've made very, very strong points, you know, and um, I'm sure a lot of people listening and watching will agree, you know, with the sentiments that you've uh, put out there. We hope that the best decision is made in the end, and we wish school proprietors like you, teachers, lecturers, and students, all the best in this very trying time across uh, the world. The best for the situation is for coronavirus to go. Absolutely. We, we wish... I, I, I wish it was it was something that we could wish away, but unfortunately not. Thank you very much for, for your time. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much, you. Mr. Salako. All right. But he, he did make very strong points. Yes, and I understand indeed. the frustrations of school owners, of, of teachers, of lecturers, of the students themselves. Um, it must be really, really, really terrible for them to have been away from school for this long, you know, and people would argue if churches are open, if, if you know, markets mosques are open, open markets yes. are open, you know, then why, why can't schools, you, yes. you know, as, as well open schools? Um, and so, yes, there's very, very strong points, but we hope that the best decision is made. Um, we also don't want to put the kids at risk, you know, simply because, you know, we don't, we're tired of losing money, you know, in the education sector, or we're tired, tired of we're losing time. But I think it's, it's great that we are, that we, you know, understand, I keep talking about peculiarities of our situation, mm -hmm. understand exactly what we're dealing with, you know, here, and so we can t make the best decision. All yes, right. and that's it on this segment on The Breakfast. Next up, we'll be discussing the business of uh, Amcon and controlling stakes in Arik Air and Air Contractors. Details, you know, of that after the break. Do stay with us.